Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dicewise Entertainment Presents Pathfinder 2nd Edition Age of Ashes Campaign from Paizo, the book publishing company that makes awesome RPGs. Shout out, as always, to our wonderful sponsor, the people at Fantasy Grounds, the tabletop virtual engine. Um, there's got to be a more official name for this. I'm just not catching it. Um, but uh, we would like to thank them for sponsoring this show and giving us of the availability for free of the core rulebook, the Age of Ashes adventures themselves. We are streaming live tonight through Corey Thomas's Dark Galaxies Gaming on Twitch, which is also double back to our own channel, The GM's Cut, where you can see more of our content on Sunday nights and later on tonight. We have... A, a bit of a sideways angle going on tonight. So let me introduce our cast of characters. One last shout out, of course, to our other sponsor, Devin Knight, who makes awesome top-down art minis, which we are going to try to sub in live and show you how to do that. Now, there is absolutely nothing wrong with using pogs or whatever minis you can get your hands on, but I am a particular fan of this man's art. And after we reached out to him, he was kind enough to ask the Fantasy Grounds people through him to sponsor us as well. And now we have lots and lots and lots of Devon Knight minis, which you'll be seeing more of throughout all of our shows because we are going to try and put up more video content with our podcast. So you might be able to see the Star Wars battles live on YouTube, not just listen to the We Shot First actual play podcast, wherever you get your podcast. You might be able to see the Senate as the Cavaliers schmooze their way around before some imminent doom in our Dice Before Dishonor podcast, all shot and uploaded to YouTube and shot live late Friday night and on Sundays um, on our own twitch.tv forward slash GM's cut channel. So we're looking to double down and get into video much more as well, of course, as audio. And you'll be seeing Devon Knight minis in that. We'll be using Devon Knight minis in our Man from Assyrian Mummies Mass series. We'll be using Devon Knight minis, hopefully, in Rob's show. Rob, I hear you get a show. Rob? No, Rob. Oh, well, he'll be here later. He's busy preparing for our up and coming Starfinder horror series, the Frequency of Screams actual play podcast slash live stream, which you will be seeing at least every other Sunday night, if not every Sunday night at 8 p.m. on our own channel at twitch.tv GM's Cut. Watch for Static Fear coming this October. So, I digress. Let's introduce who we do have tonight. Um, back by popular demand. Uh, we really, really got bogged down and messed things up in the rule book. <laughs> I, I tried to force us to learn, but back by popular demand is Joe Gibson, our resident rules lawyer. Uh, yes, he is a player and you can see him playing in several of our other shows. But tonight we, we have him uh, on the trigger tonight. Uh, say hello, Mr. Gibson. Hello, hello, everybody. And uh, not to be outdone, the man who loves to give evil DMing advice while I'm trying to run a game, the guy that plays the ever stubborn, old, grateful, and lore-filled Dulgren, True Seeker the Dwarf, my trigger man in the chat room tonight, Mr. Rob Hammond. Good evening. Having some video troubles, but I'll get her fixed. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it is Friday the 13th. I don't like to date drop, but it has certainly haunted us for the first, well, like the last hour was trying to get set up. As per usual, some cast of players. Well, um, Frank Hamilton is absent this evening, and we are going to fill in his shoes by doubling down with more action and adventure from the lovely and talented newcomer to the stream, DiceWise Entertainment's executive producer, Cheryl Ball. Good evening, everyone. And a close personal friend of mine. Actually, I've known, I've known Joe longer, but <laughs> it's a running joke with Matt. Um, star of several of our shows and taking a side seat, but always managing to play the most charismatic dwarf out there, playing a dwarven sorcerer tonight, Albrecht Stonechucker. We have Matt Witt is in the house. Hello, everybody. I hope everyone is having a wonderful evening. And that's it. Because people are missing. Friday the 13th has taken Messina. No, he'll be along presently. When last we left our heroes, a certain dwarven monk was ready to pounce. And we had gotten bogged down in the rules, Joe, about grappling, 
disarming, and shoving. Well, we weren't bogged down then. I learned recently this week, those are like the three things you can do. You can grab somebody, you can shove somebody, and you can disarm somebody. And if we if we portray this in the, the right order, Ryan might get his superstar wish of separating one Calmont, the evil little halfling, who has admitted to arson at the town hall, by the way, separating him from his hostage, one of the goblins, presumably someone important because the goblins, the tribe that's over on the wall, they're making quite a stink. He's threatened to cut off her ear with his little dagger, his knife. And he wants to separate them and possibly toss him over or at least shove him back. Um, how would we go about this, Joe? How would he go about this? And then when Ryan shows up, I can explain it like I learned something. Okay. Well, since you just dropped that on me, I'll look for it. <laughs> <laughs> I did look for it. I did. Uh, I, I did a whole bunch of of of, of looking. It's it's uh, page two forty two. Oh, thank you. Grab oh, of, the core, of the core yeah. book. Uh, well, fine. Obviously, I know something you don't know. Uh, it's uh, like yeah. a nice change. Your uh, your belly's jiggling there. I can hear you twitching the uh, <laughs> the stand. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's because of my lovely little stand. I know I'm having te technical difficulties out of the yang today, so that's fine. That's fine. So uh, while we are suspended in time, looking up this inevitable event and waiting for Ryan, there are still things to talk about. There are still things to cover, starting with well, let's get our maps and everything going. So again, a quick uh, Pathfinder Second Edition lesson now. The folks at Fantasy Grounds do have awesome videos where you can see David and Jen explaining each engine. They've recently put up a Pathfinder 2nd Edition explanation that we've been watching. Uh, so I highly recommend you check them out. Um, and they have 10 minute videos, two hour videos. Like, you know, we have um, a whole bunch of different game platforms that can be used in table in this tabletop simulator for fancy grounds they have fifth edition D, D. they have first edition pathfinder of course they have starfinder which um again thank you to the folks at fantasy grounds i'd like to announce of course rob keeps having technical trouble <laughs> when i announce it in front of him that um fantasy grounds is actually going to sponsor rob hammond's show which i have the humble pleasure of running the tech and get to play in for once and uh, we'll be doing Starfinder on Sunday nights. But for right now, let's get back to our map. So as we were saying before, the little book openings that you can see here, sorry for those in audio only land, we were looking for the P that marks that I have shared certain maps with the actual audience. And we went on and on and we were looking. So going down to Seed for Citadel, trying to find where I had left it. And I'm not having much luck. So at the top here, we have a drop down menu. It talks about a group. Well, I can go all, anything new. Oh, let's look specifically in the Age of Ashes book. And it will shorten that list dramatically. Then when I scroll down with my shortened list, it should be a lot easier to find. And lo and behold, the Sildadel Elderam battlements. So I will reshare this with the group. I'll slap it down on the board here. And voila, the action as we see it. Can you guys all see this? Yes. Awesome. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Bum, 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 bum. We had Theros at the door. We had Miros, the dwarven monk, sneaking up through the other door behind him. We have a tower and one, the south side, like good three squares, two and a half squares of this tower. The wall of the tower and part of the floor has fallen away into a big crumbly mess and a good 30 feet below we have rob's npc dulgren true seeker we have a step back from that out in the courtyard on the edge of the rubble we have matt's character al as he likes to be known the dwarven charismatic sorcerer albrick stonechucker and standing another square away in the open courtyard we have mara of desna halfling played by cheryl and everyone's looking up tensely seeing that this guy has got a hostage right on the edge though he's threatening to cut his ear everyone's worried that you know they might well actually no one's worried they claim they had a cleric to heal her uh matt ryan seems determined just to like shove you know throw people off this thing for for shits and giggles <clears throat> uh, there's a fine line between between dwarven evil and dwarven <clears throat> but uh you know that's up to the players how they approach this now 
I would like to uh, correct a mistake that we made. Um, we are learning this simulator, this virtual tabletop fantasy grounds, and we are still learning the Pathfinder second edition rule set. Sometimes the adventure that you read, it's not like they'll give something to the players, but they have a certain sort of cinematic element in mind where the players are still using skills. They still got to earn things, but they might sort of very off from the strict rules. And I, I kind of miss the fact that while the hostage situation was playing out and Theros and Frank were up there on the wall talking, that that was an encounter mode. I We had just come out of a combat with the dragon, the big lizard, the nopadon. And I, my head was stuck in like round by round. What are you going to do? He's going to cut the girl's ear off, you know, bum, bum, bum. But apparently it's supposed to drop back to encounter mode. And Frank would have actually, with his awesome role of intimidate to coerce, would have had that proverbial minute to force Calmont to surrender. But without re-rolling the wheel of time, I would just like to shout out and apologize to said audience and people that are reading the adventure and reading the book, the actual core book, and we are trying to stay true to form so that we all learn and we can get into house ruling. And this is my version of Age of Ashes, but my version will be different than his version of Age of Ashes, that type of thing later on. Um, since we are the point of the spear, one of the first people, a few that are out there live streaming this, we would like to give sort of a, a pure storytelling. Doesn't mean we won't waver, doesn't mean we won't add. We have players and NPCs right in here that are not in the story. Dahlgren and his mafia of uh, oncoming dwarves that he keeps claiming, you know, completely our own thing. But we're using it to highlight some hidden things about the actual people in the town, like the Pisani brothers, who, you know, we've hinted at some of their darker worship practices, which, you know, you're just going to have to read the module and see if that's true or not, eh? Anyway. Back to the story at hand. Let's pull up the combat tracker and see where we're at. We had the halfling going, and then we were on Ryan's turn. So I would like to sort of correct something and back something up uh, to the halfling's turn. But before I do, Joe. Yes. While discussing what is possible with Ryan, what he can do. I'm assuming his best option is to disarm the halfling of the knife or technically of a person, disarming him as in separating the goblin using that move to get the goblin from him. Yeah, or you could grapple in, in the same context for that. Yeah. But for what I understand that he, what he wanted to do was too much. Wanted to grapple, shove, disarm, a, if he has three arms, he could do that. <laughs> well, he has three actions, right? Can, if can he, he has, if he has three arms, he could do that. He does not have three arms, thus he gets to pick two of those because you need a free hand for each action. Oh, so I, lo I love the finger action. I'm just waiting for <laughs> you to stop on the middle finger. Where's Ryan? Ryan needs to see this. <laughs> does he hear that, Ryan? Wherever you are. But uh, yeah, that's so he'll have to pick. Out of the, those three actions, yes, he has three actions that he can do. But for the actions he wants to do, he needs a free hand for each one. You need a free hand to grapple. You need a free hand to disarm. You need a free hand. Right? So You can't just, I grapple and then I let go. It doesn't work that way. Okay. I, I grapple. Well, well see, this, this is my <laughs> interpretation of what he wanted or me trying to say, oh, you can do this, this, and this. Um, he wanted to snatch him, like grab him and pull him right away from her and if she fell she fell but he wanted to get a hold of him and pull him away and i was saying you know well because the two of them are grappled wherever he goes because he is the hold on her and she's the hold e you know she will go uh and he's and he's threatening like if you grab him he could just you know whoop. even though it's not his turn he may have prepared an action just to release her or cut that ear yeah we're not sure so it's kind of dirty you know now the game is designed in a heroic fashion to let people do heroic stuff. And we talked about hero points. Um, and the wire foo high level stuff he seems to be attempting and still go like, oh, I told you you were going to fall, you know, seemed a bit dirty. <laughs> so I was not about to reward or embellish upon a first level character, you know, some action movie moves going, ah, you're the man, here's a hero point, when the end result would have been a hostage death. Yes. <laughs> so it's like, 
the game leads into, you know, now, now not necessarily good stuff or bad stuff or evil stuff. You can play any alignment. The alignments are there. But heroic stuff, ep, you know, an epic try. So what I'd like to do, uh, because Ryan is pending, okay, the Halfling and Miros are right on top of each other. And they're in this sort of stalemate of as one moves, the other is about to. Like he's reaching for him and you can see him either going for the air or going for the shove. You know, maybe Miros doesn't even care. So to buy some time, I'd like to ask what the players plan to do. I know it's kind of a reaction thing like, well, did she fall or does he have her? Okay. But I would like to go around and this is a little trick. Um, next in line is Mara of Desna looking up, watching these dwarves do a forceful, you know, police SWAT takedown, non-negotiating with hostages, non-negotiating with terrorists kind of approach, which could, you know, they've saved most of them, um, but they have a real no-nonsense approach. What's going through your head right now? How does Mara of Desna, or, you know, since you're the represent cleric of God, the goddess, you know, how does the goddess stand on this situation? Well, I see what's going on, and do I see... Um... One of the dwarves coming up behind him. Oh, that would, yeah, I guess that would need a perception check versus his last stealth. Okay, one sec. I never thought of that. You do plainly see that Theros, axe in hand, is is going through that doorway and threatening him at 10 feet and is saying, you know, drop the girl Oops. or I'll drop you off. This has been public knowledge for a while. So, you know, like Frank's up there closing rapidly on him and he's backing away. And now he's not going deeper in the tower where you can't see him or going through that other door. He's actually come out to the edge where you guys can see him. And he's got the girl, you know, he's kind of half turned towards the edge and half turned towards um, Theros, which really puts his back or at least his right shoulder to Miros, um, Ryan's monk. And he's threatening like, you know, one more step you dwarves and I will, you know, not just cut her, but I'll pitch her right off this edge. Um, and it had, I do remember in the last session that, that kind of stalled Frank for a minute, just for a moment, like we were going through everybody else's turn and he just kind of got as far as he would go and waited. Maybe he's trying to hold his attention so that Miros, you know, could do his sneaky sneak. Um, so what did you get for your perception? Okay, I don't know why it rolled twice. Did you double, triple click? That's okay. I'll take no, the first I one. No, I didn't. What was, your, didn't. What, what was your first one? No do-overs unless you want to hero point. Well, if it goes in order, my first one would be 24. Oh, yes. Then let's say as good as the stealth might have been, I don't think it's that good, is you see not so much the dwarf, but you see the door behind him quietly opening because you see how the door is like literally on one hinge and the wall crumbled. Like the door comes jutting out over the edge of the proverbial wall that's crumbled. Mm -hmm. it's blocking him, but he slowly, gently opens it quietly. And whether you can see him crouching because of the angle, you're 30 feet beneath him and 20 feet out, you do see the door open. And there's, okay. a, you know, the silhouette right there. He's in the doorway. You know, you don't know what's moving up on that. Maybe it's an ally, but uh, something's about to go down. So, okay. So she would probably, she would, diplomatize look stop you are surrounded you there's no way out of this reaffirming the surrender okay uh now again still holding time still on maris's turn this is this is you know this is what you see and your brain is flashing through this is my best option i gotta talk him down theoin um again is probably trying to hold his attention or wait for that charge dolgren true seeker Rob. Yes, I've made it. You've made it. We've talked about the Starfinder show twice, and you've been in and out of the lobby. I've been, I, I, I've been on Dark Galaxies listening, so I didn't miss a whole lot. Oh, but okay. Thanks. So, so, where am I, where so leave off? if you want to reach out to us live, Rob Hammond is running the chat. He is Crow with a K-R-O-W. Uh, Crow73 in, um, in our live stream chat through Dark Galaxies Gaming on Twitch. And you can ask him questions. He'll do his best to answer. And we'll even, you know, I'm not saying we're going to stop the action, but, uh, you know, anything uh, anything worth mentioning, we'll definitely put you on the air. So, but nice things. Say nice things. You know, no, 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 nobody wants, uh, you imagine you're gaming around the kitchen table with your buddies on a Friday night and someone comes rapping on the window. You shark! 
Like, that doesn't help. <laughs> you know, just change the channel. Go go to the neighbor's window. See what they're watching or what they're, what they're eating or what they're playing in their television. You know, there's no need for that. Anyway, Dahlgren, what's going through yeah. your brain right now, buddy? Where will you off? You were having trouble with a rope, a crossbow. Then you decided there might be another way up there. You took a step back. You were looking for perception. You're wondering if there might be like a, a wall ladder or something. You're looking around. You had a very good look. Um, there's a very crushed, day-old, dead lizard sticking out of this rock pile. There's a lot of rubble that you're standing on, a good 10 feet or more, because the entire section of wall and floor from that 30-foot wall has crumbled down, and you get you and L are standing on it. Uh, there is a lot to take in. But at the end of the day or the end of your frustrated six there's seconds, no better way up. there's no better way up. Is there? Not apparent to you at this moment. Then you know what? I'll reload. Okay. And I'll wait for a shot. Okay. My that's fine. Aren't getting up there right now. No, that's, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so when we come to you, your plan is reloading. Yeah. All right. Um, now you are a representative of the town. Yes. How do you see this playing out? How will the town accept the dwarves? How will you put a spin? You're like our PR guy now, besides Al. Um, how are you going to put a spin on this that, you know, first of all, the liaison is way outside the wall there, but nearby in camp that we're, you know, we're bringing your goblins, but we lost one. <laughs> Sorry. Or, you know, like, do you see this ending well? Are we in the position of the advantage? Because most of the goblins look safe, thanks to us killing that dragon thing, and they're down to their last one. We have the arsonist who the town council specifically asked to be brought in for questioning. And these dwarves don't more seem to be or less alive. Sorry. More or less alive. Uh, the, the, the arsonist. Yeah. To be honest, I think we're going to end up on top of this one. Yeah. Because like I said, if we capture, if we, if we can take, um, the halfling back in Calmont. One piece. Yeah. Calmont. Like if we can take Calmont back in one piece and have him questioned, at least we know that they're going to, you know, give us another listen because there's another story here somewhere. The goblins, well, we saved most of them, just like we saved most of the people in the fire. Well, from your perspective, can I have perception? Yes. Now, again, like I said, I've burnt one of Mara's actions by asking for that perception. And when we get around to your turn, I'm burning one of yours. Eleven. Um, Calmont is precariously near the edge and people fall. And if he drops 20 odd feet onto a 15 foot pile of rubble, he's going to take the 1d6, 2d6 damage. There might not be a lot left of these low level encounter for you to take back. Okay, what I'll do then, if I see that as the position, I'll position myself to catch him if he falls, regardless. We've got enough fighters here. So you're willing to way. you're willing to take yes. some splat and take some damage to soften the blow? We're going to have to, because okay. if we don't, then things are going to go badly. Okay, I won't move you now. Can I come? I'm an old dwarf, but I'll catch him. <laughs> Saves saves the arsonist and they squish the old man. All right, which brings me around to Elbrick. You uh, spent a lot of magic in the last encounter. I mean, you're I already sure you're already smoking. Did. You're already smoking a cigarette. You know, you, your job is done. These guys are working <laughs> after this other thing, right? Um, what's running through your head right now? You got this tentative situation. You know your cousins, your your former and new clansmen. Dahlgren is a new entity, but your two guys, your brewery, your future business partners, you know how these guys fight. You know how these guys think. You know who is the pacifist and who is the extremist. You know what I'm saying? With you down here and those two charge in and do reckless things up there, how do you see this playing out? I cannot lie. I don't see it working out well for the wee lass. And what about the council's request to bring in Kalmut? Well, we'll bring him in. May only be a piece or two of them. We'll bring him in. Very well. All right. Well, let us... Uh, hmm. I'm really at the point. Like, I, I've got Ryan texting me going, I'm on my way! <laughs> Yay! Um... What is the worst thing we could do? Give them to one of you guys, roll terribly, and have them say, well, I wouldn't have done that, wouldn't have done what type of thing. Okay, so as cheesy, and I do mean cheesy, as it is, I still believe in a live show, it is better to call his late ass and ask him, what would he do? So that's what we're going to do. 
What would Neoros do? One ringy dingy. Two ringy dingies. Maybe he's frantically trying to set up. Maybe he's watching the live stream on his computer and <laughs> doesn't want to be falling into my role-playing trap. <laughs> well. Oh, well, that didn't work. <laughs> Is not available. At the tone, please record your message. To leave a callback number, press five. You're fired. I hate you. You're ruining my show. Well, no, I love you. Just hurry up, please. Okay, so now that I've dealt with that professionally, um, I do know that he wanted to roll and try and get his hands on this guy. So going with Joe, because he can blame you. He can blame me? <laughs> he can blame you, Joe. Um, you guys actually can't roll off the other character sheets, can you? It has to be me. I can say I did it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're pulling up. So this, this is this is live. This is as you know. This, we gave them every chance. We stalled for thirty tw minutes. Twenty minutes <laughs> for him to get his butt on here. I am looking at Miros's character, and I am looking at what's needed for actually. Um, an attack roll for a grab, would that just go off my fist? Or would that just go off of... It's not an attack roll. It's not? No. So if I have at least one free hand and cannot yeah. grab some guy larger than me, I just it just says it's an attack. Attempt to grab an opponent with a free hand. Oh, athletics check against yes. their fortitude. Oh, okay. So going to his skills. Yes. Okay. Now... Um, I was talking to customer support guys. Uh, you all had questions about uh, how many ones and twenties in a row did you get last game? Way too many. I'm talking to Matt. <laughs> you, you lost. Hey, your temper I right got then. them too. Thank I, you very much. I so know. Many. I know. I know. But, uh, but we did. I think we did figure that out in our. Oh, uh, oh, oh my God! Here he is. Here he is. Hang on. Woohoo! Hello. How's it going? Yeah, well, we're, we're live. I've stalled. I really want to know. I got, I literally got my finger on the trigger to make an athletics check to have you grapple this guy. Is that what you want to do? Um, grapple, throw, toss. Gra Take the okay, well, there's there's three things you can do. You can disarm, you can grapple, and you can shove. Disarm won't happen. Okay. I just numerically won't happen. So grapple and then punch, in the, uh, punch a bunch of times. Okay. Right, so now, now do you, are you interested in grabbing the girl? So if he goes, you have her, or you just want to grab him and just wailing like you're at a bar? Would you allow me to grab the girl? Sure. Okay, I will grab the girl, and I'll punch him several times. You're going to punch the girl several times? No, no, no. <laughs> as entertaining as that would be. I'll teach you to take a hostage. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'll get it there. All right. This is what you get for being uh, caught. <laughs> Okay. See you guys on the camera tonight. Ends up no. So what I want to do is grab her, yeah, and then give bitch a flurry of bitches. Oh, okay. Okay. I just at least we have a live consensus from you. It's cheesy as it is to have my phone up to my a micro microphone. So all right, hurry up, get in here. All right, go here. Thank you. Okay. So there you go. You've heard it, ladies and gentlemen. His intent is to make that athletics <laughs> check. Not my fault. Now, as I was saying, from customer service, um, we were spamming. I was telling you guys to spam the actual bonus, and it, the dice pops up, or we are picking up a dice and dropping it on somebody's head to target them. If we actually use the tracker via me or yourselves to make a target early, you guys can pick up the actual little gold dice, I was told. Like, not the big ones down the bottom of your screen, but the actual gold dice that are next to the modifier. So if we go to athletics here, we go across, and he's got a plus seven, impressive. There's a tiny gold dice. And see how my cursor turns to a hand? Click it, pick it up. Now I'm dragging a dice with an auto modifier, and they were telling me that the game mechanic in dice in this system, in uh, Fantasy Grounds, is the way I toss my cursor, the way I move my mouse, is conducive to a real 
dice roll. So a nice big wind up here. One, two, three, and let her go. And look at that. 15, 7, 22. He grabs a hold of the girl as one action. Back me up on this, Joe. Now for regular actions, he has two left. Yes. Um, he's allowed to use powerful fist. That was on his character sheet. I'm not yep. sure. I think it's two actions. Yeah. Which allows him, um, I believe it allows him to, to strike twice as a single action. Right. Yes. Right. But I have to go down the line. I have to use the big plus, then the second plus. It just takes less actions, right? So. Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So double checking to Miros, okay, that he actually has Kelmont as his target. So I'm opening the tracker. This is a DM trick, clicking on the target, and I'm going to drag this on to now I've got Kelmont as my target. So when I pick up and flail away with powerful fist, 25 hits the halfling. And then I will just double click the damage dice. And then the second one in the plus three and whale that at the halfling, another hit. And again, double clicking the damage dice. So closing the tracker for a minute and closing down Miros, he has hit him twice, grabbed the girl, and then reaches over and just starts smacking the guy, beating him in the noggin, hits him twice. Um, yes, sir. Just a correction for Powerful Fist. Yep. Uh, it, it, all it does is ups his uh, fist damage to D6 and removes the minus two circumstance penalty when making a lethal attack with non-lethal unarmed attacks. Not yeah. a flurry of blows. So it's, yeah. So it's oh, not okay. a fury of blows. It's it just that's your uh, martial arts. Basically. Oh, I see. Sorry. So instead of the D four martial art that everybody has, the smacking around instead of the, all the unarmed strike they got rid of, the yeah. regular real damage D four powerful fist allows him a D six, and that's it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the circumstance bonus. Now they do have fury of blows. Right. Sorry, but he doesn't have that yet. Yeah, he does. You start with it. Oh, really? Because I didn't see it on a sheet here. It's on his actions. Yeah, it says make two unarmed strikes. If both hit the same creature, combine their damage for the purpose of resistances and weaknesses. Apply your multiple attack penalty to the oh. strikes normally. Yeah, I got it here. Sorry, it's in his abilities, but it wasn't something that showed up in the combat. Um, so it, so it allows two. him It allows him just to make a two unarmed strikes. Now, are those the D4 unarmed strikes or powerful fists? They're all every one of his strikes is powerful fisted, unless he declares he's going to do. Non okay, so I rolled the right dice. I was just calling it wrong, because right. I've got two attacks in. They both hit. They're both done a d6 plus his bonus. Yep. So I don't have to change anything dice. I just have to be careful yep. the way I'm how you word it. Yeah. Yep. Well, you know, we we want the correct terminology here. It's taken me for everything to start calling these things actions and not chevrons like we did during the beta. So, guess what? This guy is taking some serious, serious damage. He is just beating him bloody, but he's still standing. And that's Miros. So Mara of Desna, burning an action to take that perception and to take it in. You want to start, um, you know, trying to talk him down. Sorry? Yes. Okay. Sorry, yes, I the, do. the mic wasn't picking you up. So can I have a, what are we looking for? Um, now they were talking about having the minute and how we should have had that as an encounter scene. So at this point, like he was shaken for a round. Did you want to do the intimidate thing and just tell like, there's no way out, you know, so he realizes the truth and keep him scared. Sure. Or did you actually want to like, it's okay. You know, they're not, the dwarves aren't going to kill you. I have a long leash. Well, I can't, that wouldn't work <laughs> now, would it? Okay, well. <laughs> He doesn't know you people. You could be their, you know, I don't know, guardian, something. All right. How's your bluff? <laughs> just like... Oh, God. 12 intimidate. Okay. Um, and you got to beat his will. Uh, he does look down at you, you know, with one eye swelling up as he's taking the pounding or whatever, but you're not sure if the message is getting through. Uh, one action left. Did you want to move or? Uh, 
You don't have to take it. I'm just saying. It's, no, it's available. It's, I'm, I'm good. Okay. So that is round six, even though it was supposed to start a brand new combat. Sorry about that. Um, Theowen sees this guy getting pounded, and he will come in and make his move. So I believe that holding up like a flanking position, that kind of thing. Now, his buddy has got a hold of the girl, yet he's attacking the halfling. And I don't think, back me up on this, Joe, there's nothing here about um, grappling. Like, we've got him flanked, right? And instead of giving us a plus two to hit, like yield days, all it does is actually drop the guy's armor class. So you kind of get that plus, but there, there's an important distinction um, now that he's flanked. So we're going to show off the condition track here. We're going to add a condition. And we're going to go to conditions by pulling up the little gray man. And we're going to find flanked, which I don't see. So when you and an ally are flanking a foe, it has a harder time defending against you. A creature that is a creature is flat-footed, taking a minus two circumstance penalty to AC to creatures that are flanking it. Oh, okay. If, to flank a foe, you and your ally must be on opposite sides or corners of the creature. A line drawn between the center of your space and the center of your ally's space must pass through opposite sides or opposite corners of the foe's space. Additionally, both you and the ally have to be able to act must be wielding melee weapons or be able to make an unarmed attack, can't be under any effects that prevent you from attacking, and must have the enemy within reach. If you're wielding a reach weapon, you use your reach with that weapon for this purpose. Okay. Well, he's flat-footed. Check it and see. He's got a fever of 100. And okay, so um, Theoen moves in, gets the, gets the flat-footed on him, and I believe he can precisely strike with his axe just as easily as one might precisely strike with, you know. Uh, any penalties about not hitting the civilian that's grappled there, Joe? I don't think so. Nope, it's just... Uh, now, I will give this guy a plus one to AC as a shield bonus from having a person in the way, because I do know he's facing towards Frank, so I'll give him that. But otherwise, otherwise, I'm thinking, if we pull up Theo in here, and we pull up Theo and Zach's, and we do... Lots of happy, happy, doink, toss that in the old box there. And 16, which is a miss. So, I think you just keep going to town. Uh, Desna has an issue with this. Okay. I yell, stop, don't kill him. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's the two of them look like the... You ever you see that cuckoo clock come out and the two little dwarves are chopping wood? Da, 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 just pounding away in this guy. Back and forth. Okay. Uh, yes, I'll have him hold his last miss. I mean, your is three is the reason... Oh, what? Oh, okay, right. Yeah, flat of his axe, maybe try and knock him out. I can see there's a Frank move. Dahlgren. Uh, at this point, let her go. Okay. Did you what? Did you want to make that move? You made your uh, perception. You said you're talking about yeah. getting in the way. I'm gonna make the moon say, "Let her go. We'll take you home alive." Okay. Uh, anything else? Nope. Because I'm staying prepared. I'm just gonna hold back my actions till yeah. I see what happens. Okay. It's whether I have to cast healing or grab a weapon or catch him. I'll be ready. Right. So um, there's delaying. And then yes. there's readying in action. And is there readying in action in the second edition, Joe? Have we got into that? Have we gotten to that yet? No, we have not. I know we're talking about delaying, but well, you could easily just say you're delaying. You know, you're delaying for that. You know, you'll jump, and then you can just you step out of combat and you just jump right in whatever you want when something happens. Um, they That's might best. they they might have just kind of killed the sort sort of ready in action altogether. Well, looking. yeah, it's there is the <clears throat> sorry uh, conditions for ready in action. It's uh, almost the same as before. Just let me actually find the proper rule set for it. The thing with delaying is somebody has to happen. Like, oh look, he dropped her. I go now, but they've gone and she'll hit the ground before it because you'll go next. Where if you're ready in action exactly. saying, I'm focused on this one thing happening, and if he lets go, this is the one thing I'm going to do. You get to react. So would that but, be a reaction but, but or an action? 
don't know if you can set up a reaction. Like I said, we got Joe on it. However, he hasn't let go, and we know what you're doing, so I'm going to move on, and yep. Joe will get back to us, you know, when in the event of. Al. Al, what, I, what do you got going? I am going to move up beside Dolgren, I think. And that's going to take two actions because of the terrain. And uh, do the same thing he is. Just be there in case the wheel ass falls. Okay. You let him know? And maybe, maybe shout up. Oi! My cousins are going to brain you if you don't stop this nonsense. Well, there, he is being brained. <laughs> I don't know how your eyesight's going there. He's literally getting hit in the head. Well, he hasn't been brained yet. <laughs> I thought that's what braiding was. Just give it up already. I'm thirsty for a pint, and you're interrupting my afternoon repast. Oh, dear. You're interrupting a dwarf's drinking. Is that an intimidate check? Can I have that? In, uh, in sure. Can I have that in chevrons and actions there? Keep the guys afraid, very afraid. Intimidate. Natural 20 for 26. Oh, okay. I'm on fire, and I really whipped that one. Oh, yeah, I'll definitely, <laughs> def, definitely keep them in the shaken world. That's the halflings go. And as the shoulda, coulda, woulda, as people are who've read DMs that have read, uh, GMs that have read the book are like probably already shaking their fists at me. He is reacting to getting hit on both sides. And he goes to, you know, cut her ear and maybe shove and fall back, like use the momentum, whether you, whether Ryan has her or not. And she takes all this distraction as a chance to twist away from him. The problem is, as per the setting, the twist away was from the halfling, but more than the halfling has him. So how does one escape a grapple? You make an athletics check against your opponent's fortitude, yes? Because they, I, have, they haven't talked about her initiative, they just give you a certain amount of actions for her on his turn, on the halfling scope, because the two are kind of stuck together. So if one were try trying to escape a grab. You attempt to escape from being grappled, immobilized, or restrained. Choose one creature, object, spell effect, hazard, or other impending, imposing any of those conditions on you. Attempt to check using your unarmed attack modifier against the DC of the effect. This typically, this is typically the athletics DC of a creature grabbing you, the thievery DC of a creature who tied you up, or the spell DC for a spell effect, or the listed escape DC of an object hazard or impediment. Right. So if his if he has a plus seven to athletics, that's like a DS seven DC seventeen. Yeah. Not and necessarily like the says, last roll that he did. Um, you can attempt an acrobats or athletics check instead of using your attack modifier if you choose, but this action still has the attack trait. Okay. And then there's critical success, success, and critical And can failure. I pick one target per action? Because I have two people holding it. It's me. one. Okay. One creature, object, spell effect, hazard, or impediment. Yeah, and but it, she's not trying to get away from the dwarf. She's trying to get away from the halfling. But she so has, she can go towards the dwarf she when has, she's escaping. Right. Yeah, well, she, well, she has three actions. They've so kind of overrid. They've overridden the story saying, at this point, she twists away. Well, if she's twisting... Right, I don't have one person holding me. I have two people holding. Yes, me. but she can twist towards the dwarf. <laughs> Perhaps. Um, the way I was picturing it is she's, you know, she's trying to one eighty, and the dwarf is trying to hold her, which you know also kind of prevents the same kind of movement. Anyway, I'm going to give her a check, and anyway, so she manages to wrestle free of the halfling, and because Miros goes right after. She begins struggling. Ryan. Yes. Okay. I mean, I... You, you've grabbed the goblin girl. You've, oh, wait. Appropriately. Yes. You've punched... Yes. Yeah, on the shoulder. On the on the collarbone. You know, tentatively. It was consentful. Yes. Yeah. Like, as you came in with a big grabby hand, you make the hand do the mouth thing. Do I have your consent? And she just <laughs> nodded pleadingly, and you slap a hand on the shoulder... Like a very, very rescuey fireman friend. Okay. <clears throat> other other hand actually landed two powerful blows on the halfling. Wham, wham. Very nasty, like 18 points of damage. Theon came in, gave the flanking bonus, and started chopping away. And the halfling shout out, don't kill him. So you guys have hurt this guy really badly, but you haven't killed him yet. 
Now it's subdual. a half. It now it's the halfling. Sorry, yes. Uh, well, same amount of damage, eighteen points. If you want to subdue them, that's fine. Yes. But from our point of view, thirty feet below, it just looks like you're wailing away. Yeah, I mean, no, of course. Nice, yeah, from nice below, you yeah. see the impression on the backside. It's yeah. Um, so anyway, my thing is here. The halfling's going, and in the adventure, they have this point where he's had enough. He goes to cut her ear, and she actually at this point goes to slip free. But you and the halfling have a hold of her. So if she starts twisting to get away from him, would you let her go? Or would you pull? What would you do? Now she's going before you, so you're kind of keeping her I would from twisting. Her. You would, okay. Um, so what I'll let you do is I will allow you to burn future actions. They do this in, in the game mechanic. They're costing you now to do a reaction that's not on your turn. Okay, so I'll blow an action point to uh, assist. Yeah, well, a hero point. Nice. Right. Oh, so she oh, okay, she okay. she twists. Right. Use your your hero point, and you go when it's not your turn. What mm -hmm. as a hero point allows, and yank her free. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Down. I, I'm 100 percent down for that. He goes stumbling backwards. He doesn't fall, but his dagger does. Uh huh. So now he's a step back. The dagger is on the ground in front of the three of us, and you have a hold of the girl. And it's your turn. Um, okay. So you've used a hero point to go when it's not your turn. You've pulled her back, and you have, I believe, I don't think this would like necessarily burn all your actions. Mm -hmm. uh, does it cost you an action to spend a hero point? I wouldn't think no, so. No, it does a, not. I don't think so. Right. So it's not you got, you got, considered an action. You got two left. You have the girl free. He goes uh, stumbling back. The knife's on the ground. What do you do? Hmm. All right. My, you've had you've had thir you're 30 minutes late. You've had lots of time to think about this. You had a week to think about this. <laughs> don't don't stall me I, now. <laughs> no, I I have beaten him again for my second action. Okay, so you want to like just start giving them the foot? Yeah, reach, yeah, reach, 100%. Reach okay, and I, you're doing the, the you're, left one is coming around. Okay, so you're doing the you were talking about subdual earlier. No, yeah, it's all, all subdual. Okay. Don't unless, kill him, lot. <laughs> unless I unless I state it, let okay. the record state that it is always subdual unless I state otherwise. Okay, now is that for people? Or are we always going to assume that if you're fighting a monster all the time? I will tell you when it's lethal. If what, not, what about a monster, like an actual like that dragon? Are we just assuming? Hundred percent. Nope, nope. Nope. Let this cannon stand and let it be. Okay. The yeah. Nope. The stand, unless I will err on that side as opposed to the other side. Okay. So again, this come back to bite me, but this is how we go. Okay, we'll have we'll have a we'll have a safe word. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's not cinnamon. When you tell no, me it, that you crack your knuckles, I know you're see, going lethal. Don't. I like crack my knuckles better if, if that's okay with you. Tell me you crack. Uh, that's if, okay. If it's you okay. crack your knuckles, I know you're you're gonna go lethal. If you just like walk menacing towards the undead and go see cucumber, <laughs> I, I, I I don't think I'm gonna keep my shit together. So. Uh, no, that's that's fair. That's fair. Thank you. We'll save CQ Cumber for maybe another kind of safe word for another instance with you. Anyway, moving on rapidly. Uh, you yeah. have actions left. What do you do? Um, so yeah, one was given up to help. Uh, I use my second action for a flurry of batons of mm -hmm. some dual batons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and then my third action. Let's see what happens if my can I see what happens? Resolve my second action. Yes. Yeah, now he's targeted. Yes. So all you got to do is pick up the dice from your foot, from your fist, as it were, your powerful blow, and just toss it, and it'll automatically target him. You don't have to drop it on his head. Yep. No, I'm just uh, trying to – I'm just jumped in now to the uh, okay. fantasy grounds. And okay. Just so while, while he's resolving, Mara, why don't you tell me what you'd wish to do? I'm just yelling at them. Don't okay. kill him. Okay. Surrender. Tell the halfling to surrender. Okay. Okay, I, I found it, I think. All right, so I have my powerful fist mm -hmm. or foot or head or knee or whichever I choose to be powerful. It's okay. all of me, really. Okay. Um, I want to roll the first one, so I roll the first attack. Mm -hmm. A 13 to strike. Okay. It and misses. Then, oh, poo. And then I rolled a 22. That's a hit. Nice. 
And if you actually, there, there's a bunch of brackety gobbledygook, but if you actually read the fine print in the last bracket, it'll say hit miss. And if you see that squinting oh. into the chat window there. I see it. Yes. I know now. All right. Yeah. So for the second one, ideal. <laughs> Deal with this. Five points of subdual damage. Okay. Is it still called subdual? Uh, well, we'll call it the non-lethal. It's non-lethal, yeah. Right. Non now, he's taking wounds, and he has a current hit point total. I'm not sure how to deal out. Like, there's temporary hit points, I guess you could say. But for right yeah. now, um, I'm just going to convert it myself. Nope, that's temporary hit points. That's... I just made it more powerful. Okay, going back no, to... No, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> go, go. Yeah, I think it still counts as wounds regardless of, yeah. of lethal or non-lethal. But for the story purposes, you're you're beating him up. You're hospitalizing him. You're not trying to take the man's life. That's fine. Wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. Um, still standing. Action. Okay. Now, I would like... <laughs> the action that would happen... I have one action point left. Mm -hmm. I would like... The action is called... Shove. Okay. Yeah. But I would like to thematically play out as in like Groundhouse Kick. Okay. So you want to shove him which direction? Um, he was standing on the edge last of my knowledge played, right? No, right. he he dropped his knife and his St back stag against... st staggered back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll I will put i will give him a shove towards the edge kind however like i yeah. think i think shove can get you a good 10 feet though it, it, on a really good roll it can go credible incredible i'm yeah. just hoping space between him and the uh, goblin formerly known as hostage okay the goblin is in front of you you're holding her in your square and you're kicking the guy corner wise to move him off that corner unless you shove him towards like like along the wall towards theon you're bringing her closer yeah, if you've got your hand on her, I would say just move her behind you for your last action. It's probably the safest bet. If I can do that, then... Sure. Shove her behind you. Doink. Yeah. Use an action to assist her defense, we could say. Sure. Whichever you wish to play it out as. We'll call it a shove. She goes behind you, and she appreciates the defensive position you've placed her in. Happy? Right. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mara. Um, the dwarf seemed to be sort of taking a moment, you know, he's, he's actually breaking combat, putting the girl behind him. You know, we can't quite see what's going on with the halfling's gone staggering back, but the dwarves aren't like, you know, crazed and chopping. They seem to be taking, you know, they're still, they're still hitting at him. They're like, they're still in combat, but they do seem to be a little bit more measured from what you can see down here. What do you want to do? Still calling up. Yeah, I get that. Anything else? Again, I would probably just say, look, you need to surrender. Diplomacy, more diplomacy. Okay. Um, yeah. Never mind. I'm not very diplomatic today at all. <laughs> Let's roll one. Listen, you bloody jerk. <laughs> surrender. She picks up the dwarven Scottish accent and becomes very scary. Even with a one. <laughs> um critical fail emboldened by your words uh, yeah uh theoen um is just blocking the doorway and telling him he's got nowhere to go you're either going off the edge or you're giving it up dahlgren down there ready for the catch um the girl uh you guys can kind of see the dwarf like even though you're right under him you can see the dwarf like literally over the edge oh ah, no don't do it jackson don't drop that baby and then puts him behind him and uh she seems safe for the moment so you're free well, to do as you wish really there's not much to do from down here but wait to see how it plays out you could run over and tell her to jump to you but other than that, she's a good 20 feet up 15 no feet. Yeah, okay no i'm, okay. I'm only gonna save her from five feet of that <laughs> okay no, it's fine. I didn't know if you had a spell or, like you said, you, no, you've got the crossbow I'm, loaded. I'm going to back, but you know what I am going to do? I'm yep. actually going to back up since it doesn't appear she's in any immediate danger. I'm going to back up where I can get a better view just in case this does go wrong. Sure. You want to back up to like where Mara is back there? Yeah. Out in the courtyard? Sorry. Okay. So, put you out here if you don't mind. Uh, much better and go for killing. Okay. And L. Brick. Right. L follow suit. 
with Dahlgren back up, get a bit of review. Okay. You just get you in Stand in beside Mera. Okay. We look like heroes. <laughs> Strike the Charlie's Angel action pose. I am still holding out for some artwork. I'm telling you. I think it would be awesome. You just Can you guys not just picture that silhouette in a really Technicolor 70s? You've got a foot from Meros and a mug instead of a fist going one way. You've got Albrook in the middle. Or sorry, you got uh, Frank's uh, Theon in the middle, holding an axe with the big horn helm, and off to the off to the right, instead of a gun, you've got the double snake-fisted finger guns shooting magic missiles, pointy hat Elbrick to the one side, and there we have a big looming butterfly and a halfling praying over the yes, back. Yes, your of... conscience, <laughs> right? And in the backdrop, barely noticeable, but framing the whole shot is this empty, heroic-looking helmet. And that, as soon as I can draw that or commission that, that's going to be your artwork, boys. I'm telling you. It's epic. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, send your submissions to rollmongers at gmail.com. So, um, the halfling. Processing. <laughs> I know, actually, um, he's got lines. Um, he's got lines like snowboarding. Yeah. <laughs> no no <laughs> well I, it's a winter sport it's totally valid yeah <laughs> um damn you these little pests did not tell me how to find estella's ring he takes he he takes a step towards Meros, standing over his knife, and he looks furious, but he doesn't, unless he's trying to trick you, like a scoop up with the foot or whatever. He just sort of like, you you place the girl behind you, and he's following suit. He steps in front of you, Meros, and he's looking at the girl, but he's yelling at you. And he puts his back to Theron, and he's standing over his knife, and he's like, damn you! What did you think? No! These pests need to tell me how to find Estella's ring. And that's all he does. No, Hui Wan. You need to sit down, calm down, and come with us peacefully. Or else me cousins are going to toss you off there faster than you'll even think it. No. Oh. He reaches down and snatches up his dagger. What do you think? These freaks know how to get to the basement. They used to live down there. Everyone knows that. Those block stairs, and he just kind of points over the edge at the big pile of rubble you guys are standing on, looking down at Al, as if that's his answer. Those block stairs on the first floor, they can't be the only way down. There's an elf gate down there. You do have any idea how so much would pay for information about a lost elf gate? A lot. These worms won't tell me how to get downstairs. And he's brandishing his knife again at you, Miros. What do you do? It's your turn. You best put that pointy thing away there before you get yourself hurt. You're kind of irritating me by pointing that in my general direction. Albrecht, can I toss them? No, lad. Just knock them out. Good luck in my cousins here. If we we're left where I was. You wouldn't be getting this so nicely. And I give him a flurry of batons. Okay. Batons! Um, Theros, Theron, I had him ready in action that if he went for his blade, he would turn his axe to like the fly of the blade. Now, can I take a penalty to use a lethal weapon as a non-lethal weapon? You sure can. Minus two. Wonderful. Then as this is playing out, he picks up the knife and starts waving it. You just kind of, as you get, like, you, I know you're getting ready for that punch, Meryl, so by all means, punch yeah, it away. But yeah. Theron, Theron had to drop it. He just kind of, like, holds the he axe out, the flips it sideways, and just ding, <laughs> like baseball bat from behind. Um, and uh, Yep. King fries are done. Yep. So you go ahead, and I will, uh, let's see if we can see if Theron drops him. But, uh, yeah, with a negative two, huh? Okay, so we'll just, oh, now I, get, I better... Uh, Get the modifier going here. Adjusting to negative two. Nope, that was a plus. Negative 
too. So I've actually hardcore typed in the bottom of the chat window here into the adjustment there. I don't know if you guys can see this. So my next nope. roll will be at negative two. And Ooh, voila, the great axe with a 24 hits even with a negative two. And I forgot that uh, good old Theron here didn't have a target. So I'll just reinstate um, Theron's target to be the halfling so that when I do damage, which is happening now, non-lethal, of course, Kaping, 18 points. <laughs> <laughs> non-lethal mm. <laughs> but it, di it didn't go to the halfling nothing happened hmm strange um strange things anyway you're saying he only had 12 left so you're saying to him you know and you call down to al al right is it i need to throw off the ledge right it's a bit of a balan to which al responded no, lad, just knock him out. And as you look, as you look back, Meros, right? You see, Ther you hear that ding, and you see Theron just standing over him. And I like to ready in action <laughs> just to put my arms out, like. <laughs> you want to grab him so he doesn't go over? No, I just, I, it's just a follow up. I really th figure Theron would appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, oh, the field goal. Sorry. <laughs> put your arm. Sorry. I, I thought you meant like put your arms out to like grab the halfling gracefully as he sinks into your arms, not go. Well, you you will if it's a goal. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> anyway, your mighty small lone foe uh, is vanquished and is unconscious. Hmm. Goal. And as soon as we're out of combat, I'm going to take ten, take twenty, whatever it takes me to climb that freaking rope. Right, so um, <laughs> Theo really has him off the wall. Th Theo, well, Theo and in, um, um, Theo and in Meros, do you guys have any rope between you where you can like lower some? Now you have some time. Yep, I have fifty feet of rope. Yeah, so he lowers and he can like literally like pull you guys up here. <laughs> you know? Wait, wait, wait! No, no. As we lower him, he, we do like the mannequin thing. The mannequin. <laughs> oh, you want to like bury that? Put loops. Or on. we could ask the residents that are there how to get him down or get up there. Oh, no, this is just Miros and Theo having fun. <laughs> the little goblin horde comes forward, just or roll, not. rolls him off the edge. <laughs> Whee! Screw you! Yes. Anybody obviously in charge? Yes, actually. Um, the female goblin... Oh, that is a goblin dog. Where'd we go? <laughs> no, the female goblin dog. Ooh, Jeff, 2019. You can't talk like that. <laughs> family show yeah not sure who's family but <laughs> so you guys have Calmont yes we do yes you do oh yeah we totally strip him of everything but his like underwear put his clothes back on it's cold <laughs> just, just, just leave the night <laughs> oh, I will fight you in the parking lot <laughs> everything but his underwear me the old man you're gonna fight me in the parking lot yes well, we'd be lucky if we'd make it to the parking lot. I might jump you beforehand. You and him in the playground at recess. <laughs> I bite dirty. I bite. I throw you, sand. I take my own pants off. the information he has. Do you know what he's talking about? The Elf Gates? The Ayadura? I have no clue whatsoever. Maybe but I'm taking his jerkin. Well, do I know what he's talking about? Well, let's, let, let's, let's start with our resident bard, because this is a location, not necessarily the draconic lore. Yeah, it's, it's, yep. This falls into the, the, what I said earlier. Like I said, I'll make the lore roll. Okay. You can both make it, Al, as well, but I, I know Al specifically had the draconic lore. Uh -huh. Well, I was thinking maybe that, Arcana. That, that works for me. Oh, uh, yeah, Arcana, sure. Thirteen. Thirteen and Dolgan got twenty three. Okay, Dolgan. How about a little exposition so the DM doesn't have to? Do you understand what he's talking about? These goblins know about the Aidadura, the gates of Kendron, the lead between Golarion and Castravel. One step and you can be halfway around the world. They're all yeah. looking at you dumbfounded. <laughs> this is a secret we may not want to be getting back to the town right away. I think we should look for it. 
these gates exist to all major places of magic and powder across Galarian. Have we any takers? Well, I have to say, I'm definitely interested. Seems like a great location for shipping out fine quality dwarven brews halfway across the planet. But the thing is, we could tunnel straight back with them too. Not share the secret, but these gates, they lead everywhere, everywhere possible. What say you, Mara? Uh, Unless you guys are having a private conversation in Dwarven. Do you understand there is a gate that is straight to Iadara, the elven capital of old? Well, we do have the halfling to take care of. He needs to be taken back to the, to, to the town. So I, I'll do that. If you guys want to stay here and look for the great gate. Well, First, let's get the wee goblin lass from down there. Now that it's safe in here, I'm sure she'd like to be reunited with her friends. Right. So, um, you were asking about... As for the gate, yeah. We'll keep that to ourselves. Claim madness for the wee one if he Agreed. starts spouting it to the townsfolk. The <laughs> so, two pictures of the same goblin. Helba. My friend, my friend. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for saving my life. You saved my clan. I'm so happy. And he's just, she just like cling, hangs on to Meros with like this death grip on his leg. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Hey, you're welcome. Just, do you want to chant at the marionette there? Pull this rope out. Look and make his warm wave around like a little bird. You, you lost video there, Ryan. No, uh, just munching away. Okay, think sorry. Want to see that, but he totally. I he just pull on this rope here. Take a look at his arm. Weighs around there like it's a dead man's doll. It's really fun and cathartic. Here, kill the yank. No, go on. I insist. Yank it. If you're not the own will, I know this. So, as the dust settles from the drama on the battlements, okay the um short slight goblin woman who had been held hostage you guys see clinging emotionally to miros um who finally after this outburst sort of um steps back and says excuse me <laughs> um her voice that of a horse bird excuse me th thank you thank you friends you you are friends you must be friends because because you saved the brumble brashers from this man and she just glares at him like hatefully so much flailing and shrieking ah i am helba she stands proudly for a moment pushing out her shoulders and chest and just sort of rotating her hips like ta-da here i am for a quick moment <laughs> and i am the bumble brasher's chieftain we have been stuck up here for so long days it feels like maybe even weeks hard to keep track first those awful monsters chased us from our comfy basement then that dragon dog came and then the awful halfling man showed up and talking about elves and other nonsense no elves live here just bubble brashers she looks back at her people and a deeply morose look settles upon her face i I just wanted to protect my people, but everything and everyone wants us dead. And we've lost so many already. And then just like on cue, Animaniacs, the entire clan just all start bursting into tears. They all just start wailing. <laughs> they start randomly saying, not Sparks, no, not Tim. He was the best. Oh, they're, they're hugging each other and supportive and just, just you know, this plays out this way, you know. And anyway, eventually, um, um, <clears throat> Theron, you know, goes over and taps his axe and none of that now none of that now and they just start wailing and oh okay okay you know not they start trying to calm the pack while you guys deal with the leader no i'm totally telling you just yank on this rope make him dance you'll feel better i wouldn't lie to you trust me give it a yank 
So down the bottom of this rope, he's like, he's almost at the bottom and Dahlgren and the, and the cleric kind of like go to release him and, and he's talking and he keeps hoisting him back up, like just out of the reach. Like, yep, there you go. See, it's, it's so easy. Give it a go. Cut it out. <laughs> no, look, 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 keep doing this, right? The little ones turn in red. The redder they get, the more entertaining that it goes. Trust me. Watch. Watch. Oh, oh just missed it yet again. I curse him. <laughs> I just put like, my hand consolingly on her shoulder. Like a for I, real curse? Because when, when you say curse, that actually means something. <laughs> that's uh, right. It does. These <laughs> these poor goblins are desperate to get down. They've been up here for a while. So a little while later, down in the courtyard, after we've lowered everyone, and Miros has had a really good on the side here playing with his puppet, um, some severe whiplash has happened. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he be- comes around a little bit. Do you guys want to do any medicine checks to question him? Do you guys have any questions for the Bumble Brashers or Helba? Or do you guys want to, you know, I'm sure their liaison would love to hear, you know, that she's okay. Yep. What's our, um, next, what's our next move? I would like to tie him to a chair. While they're playing with um, the halfling, I'll go with Helba and call in. What was her name? Uh, Warble. Warble. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And maybe while maybe we'll take the time while we were up on the battlements to snuff those red smoky emergency. Sure. Good idea. Good yep. idea. Yep. Uh, Theon's on that. Uh, I'll accompany. I'll accompany Albert. Okay. So dancing puppets now become, you know, remember that lecture room you guys passed through before you yep. rush the dry, mm-hmm. right? There's chairs and benches in there. You can tie them to that, Maros. Nice. Um, the halfling has already offered to take the halfling to justice. The goblins are happily united and they do live here. It's not like she needs to go, oh, you're okay. Great. Let's all head back to town. Like this is the self-proclaimed home of the Bumble Rashers, though they are kind of bummed about what to do next. So let's start with the goblins. Do you guys have, even though like this is separate, I'm sure Miros is going to have a good time questioning Calmont. Outside, <laughs> Albrick, the Cleric, and Dolgren. Do you have any questions for Helba or Warbrow? You uh, mentioned monsters down in the basement. Drove you out. Could you describe them? Men. And 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 she points at like then that thing that that lizard in the courtyard. Albert, where did you say that thing was from? Well, if my memory serves, I believe it was the Milwaukee Expanse. Hmm. That's it's quite evidence. a ways away from here, but perhaps that leads some credence to the whole. The evidence of the Ayadura is what they're called, the Ayadura. Ayadura. Uh, but again, shh, the wee ones are close by. We need, we need access. We need access to that dungeon. In good time, sir. I'm so I'll, um, with that in mind, I'll turn to Helba. Your keep seems to be in a bit of disrepair. I'm not claiming we're any stonemasons of exquisite purvey, but perhaps we can help you get in your Better house in order. Men. Well, they they claim claim to live down like in the dungeon. They don't really particularly care about what's up here. Okay. Um, Dahlgren, you asked about the monsters and she was going on about yeah. you know there was two of those lizards she continued talking while you guys like huddled up blah okay. blah blah well, let's keep this to yourselves in dwarven so turning to mara they got as far as talking about lizards and then the two of them huddled up and started whispering in, in dwarven but she kept talking and mara okay. she talks about cultists i think they were cultists and those two kind of ignore her for like two seconds so she just kind of turns to you they called themselves the cinder claws and they said our home was their home now they threatened to roast us peel us and eat us Ugh. and they had dragon mm. monsters with them two of them so of course we ran from the vaults then so many monsters on the ground floor so we ran up here to the battlements that 
dragon thing down in the courtyard kept us from getting away. It wanted to eat us. But but you came, and, and we are so grateful. And then she just grabs the halfling's hand and starts doing the big shake, you know, that type of thing. Anyway. Yes, yes, it's all, all better now. It's okay. <laughs> and the two dwarves are now caught up in time from their secret handshake. Don't talk about the elf gate. You mean the sea cucumber? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want. I, that's part of the interrogation. So go ahead. <laughs> um, right then, shall we have a bit of a rest? Head out straight away in the morning to take this wee lad back to face his justice. How Feeling? much daylight is left? Uh, you guys, you guys could get back to town if you hustle before sunset. We've barely been here an hour, really. Took you two hours to get here. You guys left kind of... So in lots of time. Yeah. Sure. Not to mention, well, I... like, she's got a camp. Remember, like, the, the warble little uh, goblin set up a camp? And they talk about a uh, skill that you can use in encounter mode and, like, outside of combat called sustain and it's like the old survival where you're like i get food i get water i build shelter right you can sustain yourself right so she has a camp going for you guys if you want to stay there in a defensible position or if you guys wanted to stay here inside you know the battlements are defensible no i'd rather have him delivered right away sure but because then there's less to... chance for of him escaping sure if he escapes from the people in town that's their their problem okay but Mara, there is one more of these creatures about that he's already told us that. I don't want it sneaking up on me on the way home. She said there was two. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's another One's one under the there. rubble and one we've already taken out. That's two. Remember the tail sticking out? On the mm -hmm. rubble you were pile you were on, your big perception. Oh, I, oh I, I, I'm sorry, I forgot about that. No, I do remember now. <laughs> sorry, yeah. I forgot there was one under the rubble. It, it's okay. He's getting old. He's what an about, old what, he's, what, he's what an about, old dwarf, you know. Like... What about the cultists? Hey, you raise a good point. Like, you'd never leave a living enemy behind you, ever. Like, <laughs> well, Dolgren, how about you and me cousin stay here? Myself and Myra will escort the wee halfling back to town. Uh, Absent Frank offers, I mean, Theron offers with his axe to protect the halfling and keep an eye on our nasty little halfling. And the three of you can stay. If oh, you... it's a wonderful suggestion. You're it's probably better suited for this anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So, do you have any objections, lass? He indicates towards Mara. No, not at all. Oh, good. They gave you the charming one. You remember? There's lots of humans to go around. There's lots yep. of halflings in the world. Calls your Budding god. Butterfl yeah. Flapping butterfly wings. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> Mr. Charming. <clears throat> but the most um, deadly and amusing looking Hell Knight warrior you've ever seen. Yes. Um, okay, so a couple minutes of you guys 10 20 minutes of you guys having this lovely encounter outside meanwhile back inside the lecture room miros has calmont tied to a bench do you have medicine to bring him around medicine skill miros oh i just know the mole leaves the hole goes around the burrow comes back into the hole leaves the hole yet again goes around the whole town goes up into the tree comes down goes back over Okay, so you guys, you guys want to come and get your cousin? cousin yeah, you guys get. Uh, he's tying him up, and uh, doesn't it's a halfling with fifty feet of rope. So, That's and right. I'm using all fifty feet. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's like Houdini, except yeah. like. So I'll, I'll head into where Miros is. Sure, you guys. You guys head I'll in. I'll indicate yeah. Dolgrin to follow because he's more knowledgeable about this gate nonsense. There's a cr a crop of brown hair sticking out the end of a bench which is completely heaped in a cocoon of rope <laughs> and then the mother spanks the child and uh, that's how you tie a note who is trained in medicine i'll give you a, I am. a freebie i am <laughs> he might suffocate 
He's got it like up to his forehead. Like, okay. like there is a crop <laughs> of brown hair. What are you doing in here, out, lads? How I'm many times have I the... told you don't play with your food? I wasn't planning on eating. And I go and I, I coil the rope to below his like respiratory failure line. Okay. I was making sure the wheezy little bastard there didn't move out there if I'm there. I thought you were putting yeah. in a cocoon so you could become a little flipping butterfly. So and then I'll. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> you you. <laughs> You beat him senseless. You dangled him from a rope up and down on a chain like a marionette. Now we've wrapped him up and possibly cut off his air supply. Um, without even a medicine check, the guy is in badly need of treatment. First aid. So I will treat him. First no, 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 wait. You want me to wake him up? I can do this for you. <laughs> no, I think you've no. done enough, hon. Go bask in the glory of your victory. I there's am. A, there's a wee ha, There's a wee goblin lass who seems to fancy you. Hey, well, you know, it's uh, personal magnetism. Mm -hmm. It's hard to miss. Well, I know the three go, dwarves. Go can... let her rub your pecs or something. I'll take care of this with Dolgren. You know, after trying them, they're not there. They are a bit sore. They're a bit tender. <laughs> You're onto something now, Rick. That's Mental why image of a I like you the best. Rubbing his boobs. Oh, good point. <laughs> uh, how does the cleric feel about a fellow halfling getting uh, molested by dwarven medicine? I mean, he's literally, I, he's literally got his finger in his mouth. You know, we're going to give him the old sea cucumber. That'll wake him up. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh Lord. Not that he doesn't deserve this. Uh, but... <laughs> not giving her a chance to intervene. Well, can clerics, can clerics still just channel healing power? What one cleric has hit nothing all combat has been supporting your sh yelling and shouting, and the first chance he has to practice medicine, the sorcerer goes, "I'll do it." Shove. So I'm just curious, <laughs> maybe from a no, half no, no, like no, that, wait, and then the monk came in on top of that and said, "Shove." Let it be known that I was the last shover. I'm, I'm all Not for lethal. you guys. I'm all for you guys breaking ground or whatever. However, there is Al saying he wants to do medicine. Give me the check there. And he you... already did. Okay. 20. Okay. And do you want to aid him? Nope. Apparently he has this. Okay. You don't know if good everything. <laughs> Can I roll to get my pecs rubbed? <laughs> I am not rubbing your pecs. <laughs> I'm not impartial. He's not fussy. He turns to Dahlgren. A warm of my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Dahlgren. <laughs> You just see a wave of chest hair kind of wave in anticipation. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, my God. So the patient, the sorcerer, and the cleric are in the foreground. And in the background, there's an old man rubbing his hands and, and somebody sticking out his chest. Okay. The goblins are, like, just following you guys around. <laughs> taking, Remember, Jeff, in this, taking in everything. This is your story, Jeff. Mm. So um, going back to medicine <laughs> about Joe. We talked about uh, hit point restoring and stuff. So I'm assuming this is the same as like bringing somebody around, like, you know, clear, right? Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just a simple medicine check. Uh, I think it's like 15 for, for six or so first aid on a patient. And um, that should give you enough hit points to, at least to bring him conscious. So going with that, he, you know, eyes dart open, looks around, does does the wiggle and shift, makes a sour face, and then just kind of settles down looking up at you, Al. Oh, you finally decided to come back to us now, have you? So as you are saying up on the battlements, what nonsense has you doing these foul acts all across the countryside? <sighs> That's a stupid question. Of course, I set the fire. Whoosh! Ah, you should have seen everyone's faces. How else was I supposed to stop the stupid council from sending heroes to Hell Knight Hill? That would have interrupted my plan to find the elf gates. But now you're here anyway. Blah. Should have set an even bigger fire. And he just kind of like turns his head away like, hmm. 
<laughs> what else can I do? <laughs> do you have an idea how to find the gates? Estella's ring. It's only a a ring I'll, I'll, of elf I'll, gates. You I'll know, see this ring. Yeah, I'll see this ring. A little prick. <laughs> Connected. What do I care? Yeah, right. What do I care? You know the words, elf gates. He emphasizes the last two words slowly. You know, I'm not daft. You know, and I do realize how valuable the information is to to Richies who want to travel fast. Selling that information could get me out from under Voss's thumb. Or do tell. But what? The gates that I mispronounce or Voss? Mr. Voss. You're to Voss. You know Voss, the bookseller in Breach Hill, half elf. Boy, you're not too quick, are you? Don't hit me again. That's actually in the script. Uh, Voss, <laughs> Voss is my, I'm like, he's ignorant to the end. It's like, I want to run these lines so bad. Yeah, I know. It's my story. I can change them. But it's just like, you just see Miros, you know. Hey, Miros, I think it may be time to give him a bit of a yeah. warm up. No, he he grabs you by the wrists and just keeps planting them deep in the chest hair. You your two are tied up. Voss is my employer, but she thinks she's my god. Oh, he's bossing me around. Kalma, do this. Kalma, do that. Kalma, that's not how you pronounce Norberger. Kalma, that's not how you would possibly pronounce Estella's ring. Elisita's ring, you little. <laughs> she's a jerk. I hate her. I've been digging around her stuff for weeks, freaking Gramando, trying to find something I could sell or buy my way out of this stupid job. Didn't find any goodies, but I did find her notes about Estella's ring. She's, well, she's, well, she's planning to do that information. I don't care. I just wanted to get paid. Did we find those notes on him when we stripped him down? Right. So talking about um, his actual stuff. Let's go to the back. <clears throat> Something interesting about Pathfinder second edition books is they've have a cut loose section called the treasury, the DMs, you know, it's like a little handbook and it's got your monsters that have been added, your major NPCs. Um, so they don't necessarily drop them in. They make reference to these pages and there's enough information, combat information to run them on the spot in the encounter notes, but the sort of long winded version and backstory of characters you're going to meet are all in the back of these books and a nice little, um, you know, who's who and what's what, <clears throat> and they call the treasury or the treasure box, I should say. And <clears throat> sure enough, despite some interesting history and on and on and on. I can't seem to find what they did with good old. So, you know what? We're going to cheat. We're going to go into the character sheet because he's actually here. Um, my man. Uh, let's see. If we went into. Do, 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 Probably right? inventory. Into the encounters. And then we'll go up to. Bum, 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 bum. Nope, not that one. What am I thinking of here? <clears throat> Hmm. Well, I'm curious. Um, despite his stuff, do you guys have any other questions for him? While I'm just digging this up here. What's your favorite color? Do you oh. like turtles? Blue. No. What is your quest? <laughs> to get paid to find the gates. These little buggers wouldn't tell me where they were. What What's... is the average wind speed velocity of a swallow? A South African swallow or an American swallow? Uh, I think I your know. boss would be very interested to know that you have been digging through her stuff. So I suggest you tell us everything that you know, or I'm going to tell her. Or you're nefarious. <laughs> he just makes a face at you, grinds his teeth. So... Uh, he's got torches, a little bow, a little knife, uh, small leather armor, uh, a bit of coin, and <clears throat> sorry, where are we here? Bum 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 bum. Do do do. Hmm. I must be I must be missing something like I've got his script here and I've got his actual um, stat block 
Oh, here we go. Dagger, leather armor, um, two vials, his short bow, a quiver with 20 arrows in it, and he has like a set of these tools. Sweet. Take it all. Anyway, uh, the note, the, the, what you were looking for, he probably, yep. he probably, when he says he took it, he probably like took it, read it, asked around, figured it out, you know, and then put it back so it wasn't missed. It's not like a map or whatever. It's just information that he's. We should have him take it to it. He doesn't know where it is. He knows it's in the basement. He can't, his, even, can't even find the note, door. To his notes. If he's got more information, there's probably more back at that bookstore. Possibly. That's something we can do on our own, though. Exactly. Right, then. She said he, he'd been, of, he said he's been digging, you. guys. He said, she, he said, and I quote, I've been digging around her stuff for weeks and then found out her notes about Estella's ring. So if she has notes about Estella's ring, that's probably like a personal journal that Voss has. So you'd either need to get to like Voss's bedroom or vault or on Voss herself. But he's Heroes. he's looked through it now. Either there's information there that he doesn't understand, or like I said. But again, you guys are sitting right on top of the locale that he was going to try and get out here first, find it himself, sell the information before she did what with it. Anyway, um, right. So that's enough out of you, who one sassy mouth little blugger. Gag him. Okay. Well, Theon, Mara, you'd best be off if you want to make it back to town before nightfall. Okay. Yep, that's fine. The Bumble Brashing clan, Helba, is grateful, but now, like, they've lost their home. They have nothing. They are willing to stay and help if you guys want to, like, hang out or, or you know, want to know anything else. Um, otherwise they kind of scatter, you know what I mean? Like they're, they might, they we'll, might camp out on the hill with Warble for a while. You know what I mean? Yeah. We'll, we'll all go back to the hill camp, take our supper, have a few pints, rest up while we wait for the wee lass to come back, perhaps. Or perhaps we could take a preliminary excursion. I'm not going anywhere till I've had a chance to rest up. Ah, fair enough, fair enough. And you can't get me pigs engaged straight after they've been properly masseused. And that goblin's <laughs> got some wonderful fingers. Wonderful. That wasn't a goblin behind you squeezing your chest. <laughs> I don't care. Sorry, so Al, Al what, what did you want to ask the goblins? Well, we'll all go camp with the goblins. With the goblins and Warble back okay. at the site. Okay. We'll have a, a little impromptu yay, we're not all dead party. Okay. Hooray! I have <laughs> one of those every night. <laughs> and uh, see what you can't learn, as it were, or at least uh, yeah. plan your next any, move. You oh, know any yeah. details and... about the catacombs beneath the citadel? Okay. You said something about the Perhaps vault. if some of them are knowledgeable enough, have them even draw us up a little map. Uh, that they can do. If you ask, they can draw you a very crude map and they can give you, they know the layout of what they call the east and south wings. Um, they know that monsters and dead people can be found there. Uh, yes. As for their own prior lair, um, they were hope they warn you that uh, our mascot, Big Bumble, is probably still stuck down there and probably very hungry and thus really angry. Big Bumble? Big Bumble. Mascot. Yes. Hungry. <laughs> yes. About two years ago, a small, not a cub, but a small bear known as Firepaw was... A victim oh, no. to a cavalier massacre that wiped out his beloved druid and he began to wander and he wandered from the Taldor woods of Warbone Forest. He wandered east and got bigger and finally landed and was captured and adopted 
by the Brumble Brashers, renamed as Big Bumble and a very large, very angry grizzly bear who doesn't trust the people of Taldor, people in armor in general, now sits and waits. We remember this small bear as almost being a party killer in Dice Before Dishonor and now re-entered, repackaged, twice the size, and in a brand new story, his story, which really obviously the, this entire adventure is about, uh, will continue if you can get to him. They claim they kept him locked in a room and kept him fed from afar. <laughs> so he doesn't seem, you kind of get the idea that their idea of a pet was like they caged a vicious animal and fed it. <laughs> well, that sounds like fun, doesn't it, Dolgren? You could you could let him out, and he could possibly help you run rampage through the cultists. But she does warn you that he has trouble discerning friend from foe. Aye. Isn't that right? Was, Isn't the that last time right, you Mika? wrestled a bear? Anyway, they're all pointing. They're all they're all pointing at Mika, the last one to feed, and Mika's like actually missing a hand. <laughs> Get again. I nominate Muros. <laughs> yeah, hey, do it. It sounds to me like it doesn't like humans and doesn't like armor. I'm good on both counts. Exactly. So, Theros, Theron, and Mara head back to town. Prisoner in tow with less than 50 feet of rope, but enough to securely bind him. Um, excuse me. A, a long and happy visit with Warble but I believe that once she knows her clan is safe, she would likely accompany you guys as her position in home is Breach Hill. Okay. So coming back to town and coming back to where? The temple? To wherever Warble suggests? Theon is new to town. To the council? Well, it's kind of burnt down and it's getting late, sort of after council hours. What would be your next move? Uh, I'd probably just take him to the church. Okay. Here's here's the halfling. Turn him over. Yeah. Um, they offer you respite, some refreshment, some rest, and they call the authorities and the town guard happily collect him mm -hmm. and march him off. And you can possibly worry about the red tape and politics of that tomorrow. Theoen and his usual charm probably does not end up or quickly gets booted again, you know, or just, you know, head back to the end, or maybe I'll double back to my brothers or whatever. But there is the likelihood that whether these guys come back tomorrow and as a group answer, I mean, <clears throat> claim your reward. Sorry, I was going to say answer for your crimes. No, that, so the Kalmuk can crimes. At least one of your number can stand witness, testify, you know, all of that bit. Although the party is um, a little bit separated. Um, there's going through all that on the morrow. But back out, before we go back outside to the campsite, you got, like I said, you guys are getting all this information, getting crude maps or whatever. Yep. Um, is your plan to stay here and then head back in as soon as possible or because you're there's five of you and you're down to three right uh, I would say we're not going to head in that's for sure um, I don't know let's, let's take a vote what does Miros and Dahlgren want to do I know Dahlgren has a lot to say about the elf gates now that like he's been whispering to you dahlgren did you want to possibly for the audience sake pull your dwarves aside and lay it out how important you know what i mean because it seems like dahlgren is instantly kind of you know you and al have this thing going oh we, there's a brand new mission here there's you know we have to rethink everything now the goblins are our key to downstairs maybe they have a way maybe not they hand you a happy map they tell you about a poor poor bear that was once fire pot happy and thanks to a bunch of cavaliers is now the miserable big grumble <laughs> Um, there's a, there's a bigger story here. This is the thing. Well, explain it to Meadows. I have no idea what the fuck is going on here. Uh, well, can I, can, I, can, I, can I have some lore checks? We're not we're not writing all this exposition on your last one. <laughs> oh, you big meanie! No, Hold no, on. come on, come on. I got it. 
like, where's my lore? There's my lore. What do you want to talk about? The gates? The, the supposed gates. history? The the town itself? How it was founded? You know? No, the gates themselves. That are gates. That are magical. That are made by elves. Dungeoneering? <laughs> no, I want some, what do we got no, for Arcana? No, did, that's what I was going to say. My Arcana is plus four. Sorry, I rolled the wrong. It should have been plus one, not plus four. That's what I said. That are gates. That are made by elves. <laughs> Okay. What, what does the nine get me? I rolled the wrong dice. What, what do I get with a nine? Nine? I want to take back you knowing the name that's called the Stellis Ring. That's what I want. But uh. oh, <laughs> ring. Say it right, or I'm going to have to come to the house. I'll how would, how would you know that with such crappy lore rolls? Um, My first roll was a 19. Okay. I, 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 just, I just had I had a, a stroke there, between there, there and there. There was that name. It is yes. in lore, but you weren't sure what it referenced. Druid stones... A circle like a crops of trees you know it came from elven lore but you weren't specifically i want going, to spit out the next piece but i can't <laughs> right hang on no, no. what it is okay this halfling starts talking about elf gates and excitedly you just put the two together it's like he's coming at the lore from the dummy's yeah. end and you're like well it could be this you know you're telling them it is but in your brain and the dm's telling you you're you know, you have doubts but you know what doubts don't sell two dwarves on go digging in a dungeon so on a hunch assuming that it could be that and not exalting things that your lore, you know, won't let you know. Yeah. What is your plan? Now, remember Dolgren was an NPC that you guys asked to join your party. And we kind of have this thing going that he works for me so that I don't have to play a bar or DM goes, this is this, and this is what your lore check is. And then someone like Al goes, what he said, we actually physically have a character in play that is in trouble with the mafia. I mean, <clears throat> is at odds with the Mason Guild. Um, is using you guys as sort of an intimidation tactic so that they don't kill him. <laughs> Has recently lost and retrieved his clan dagger, unbeknownst to you. And now, yay. You know, you don't want them to like me. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> now, now it was like, yay, you save the goblins, right? A bard that has a mystery, that has lore right there in front of him. Dahlgren is way more excited, guys, about the prospect that there might be something under. This is like the Alder. first time you saw me smile. Yeah, yeah. Well, other than the chest rubbing thing, but that's a whole other story. He, he, off, he offered <laughs> to come out here. He offered to come out here and take no gold for the mission look like some kind of like, you know, I'm a town local and I just want to do good and back my fellow dwarves. But now myself away. he has a whole new reason to rub his hands together besides that amount of chest hair that he's still trying to straighten out. So Al Miros. Yes. A a asking an excited Dahlgren who's telling you this and telling you that, but like I said, it's patchwork what he knows or he's too excited to kind of get it out in a story so maybe you guys collectively can make roles because what he's talking about maybe you've heard of it maybe it can help him spark his memory back because he's so excited you know trying to salvage you uh, should, knowledge you should... arcana of 23 okay elf gates yes they're exactly what dahlgren thinks and the elf the the silly little halfling was spitting out in layman's terms they are literally a teleportation portal device you walk through one you peer at another one that's keyed to it and these portals can be anywhere on galorian and the travel is instantaneous worth a bloody fortune to any kind of merchant obviously or somebody who just wants to like you know keep it to themselves that alone if you guys could find one or, you know, prove it's down there, whatever is definitely like that could information could like, you guys could buy this town, let alone start a brewery. Can I make another lore check? Is, is, sure. is he sharing that information? I don't know. This is uh, like, a, well, I, 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 I was, I was all up in Rob's head going, hold back at what you've read. Now, yeah, I'm that's all what up I was in, doing. now I'm all up in Al's head going, you know, they're talking about elf gates, you know, yada, yada. What do you think Al? So I'll, you know, in Dwarven, doing our little powwow. Yeah. Relay the details that I know about it. And I'll make another lore roll so I can give him a little more. No, I remember reading about this. Aye. Way back in Hearthstone. And uh, it's funny, but you're absolutely right. This kind of information is very valuable. 
you guys are sitting in Five Kings Mountains. To the southwest is a town that sprang up with a bunch of refugees that ancient lore, Dahlgren. Did it again? I rolled the wrong one. You I keep talking about Dungeoneering. <laughs> no, you don't know what's down there until that. you're down there. <laughs> oh, that's the one I wanted right there. Local. Come on. Arcana. Look, look Nine. at that. No. They're all in gates. No, yeah, he's talking. To, I was talking about portals, and you're like, no, my, no, my no, eyes no, are no. trying to pop out of my yeah. head. I, I remember something. I just can't quite put okay. my finger on it. So how how about knowledge local? Come at it from a different uh, angle. Let's try that one. Where would that be under? What does knowledge local fall under? Be lore. So just my straight lore skill. Be a, no, there's no straight lore skill. All lore. So that's what I'm looking. You know, I don't have knowledge local. So you can do it on. Was I supposed to have knowledge local? Uh, everybody has knowledge local, don't they? Like anyone can make a raw lore check. Oh, uh, okay. Which right? is just. Everyone can make untrained lore checks up to hitting a certain DC. So. <laughs> I like turtles. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he keeps asking everybody, "Do you like turtles?" All right. Yeah, with an untrained check of two. <laughs> okay. Actually, Look, part of the part of the version falls out of my head. It's just you. Just you disappears. have the lore, but it's been yes, years. I know. But what I'm trying to get what I'm trying to get at here, so that there's no meta. Okay, is to the north is the Kion Forest. On the other side of the mountains, where the dwarves come through, are the elves. And we're talking about elf gates. There is an elven community not so far away over there. <laughs> but using just like magic or the history of the town to know about a secret elven magical device isn't the way to get that lore out you know what i mean like no. there's too much of a gap and your roles for right now we're just saying for whatever reasons you're so excited or you're foggy but it's in there it's in there all and it will surface eventually but for right now muros hey you are big on picking breach hill for the brewery hey do you and al, do you and al have any lore on the town as to why you pick this place, just because it's the first human settlement that does well as a trade outside the Five Kingdoms? No, five it's kingdoms? Of, no, it's because of the mushrooms. The mushrooms. Hey, mushrooms. So it's a so it's a resource decision. Hey. Okay. And what about you, Al? Apparently, Ryan doesn't like the carrot I'm hanging. He just batted it away. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Al? No, tr true to form, like true to form. Hey, if Muros has got his own thing, I actually, you know what? I, um, Ryan, I'll give you your hero point back. Oh, for, for for taking, you know, for just running away from the DM carrot to stay in character. That is actually one of the reasons well, why I like playing with him. Staying canon with my characters, I could have given you a lore warfare. I, uh, we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> we're starting with I, magic I, local elven trade yeah. you know like during the war you know yeah. or nature those yeah. are my two those are my two sticks back when i was so al personally for myself i came because it's a good trading settlement okay and possibility uh, of good distribution they've got a good mix of, of races here dwarves halflings yeah. goblins humans so now, what a better place to get the word out on a fine quality drink. Now there's a town founder, which is a huge statue amongst those water towers, is a wizard. Now, if that's not a sign for a sorcerer to come downtown and go, hey, this is my kind of place, right? Of course. But can you give me some kind of lore in the town? Do you have anything? Uh, nothing natural, but I can give you a knowledge check. Intelligence, perhaps. Because it would run off of intelligence, wouldn't it? The raw roll. Um, do you guys have on your character sheets here? Let's just call up uh, good old Al and your skills. Do you not have an open slot for other lore? I, I've used them for the lore that came specifically to me okay. through my bloodline and my uh, ancestry feats and all that fun stuff. All right. I'll give you something. It's far-fetched, and there's no reason to connect this except one very small fact. Give me a Dahak lore. The evil, oh, draconic god 
I know from... lots about that fella. That's mm. part, another part of the reason I came to this area. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Lord the Hack 21. For a god to usually breach the planes, they usually like to create what's known as an avatar. It's, well, think of like making a voodoo doll that represents yourself as opposed to a victim juicing it with a bunch of your power far 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 lower in power than the god itself but a lot more powerful than bob the mortal or even a 20th level wizard and you set this puppet loose having a good time as you see through its eyes feel what it feels and you know like some kind of 100th level character what a great time. Who wouldn't want to do it? And this is usually the toned down version of oneself where gods appear before mortals going, I pick you, Pikachu! And they shit their pants and cry and, and spit out I love you and all this stuff with 30 and 50 charismas. And the mortals can barely handle the avatar, let alone the god. Dahak did this once. He's one of the gods in your lore on record that managed to find a portal or a rift or something squeeze through it get a lot of him through it and cause a lot of damage right around the time of great destruction while everyone was worried about ravagog and such way 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 back then the single fact that a god needs to breach come through a rift come through a portal and the dwarf in front of you is not talking about an elf gate the halfling said gates plural and they're talking about a ring how many how many gates would make a ring four at least four three two doesn't count three minimum three three to twelve three to twenty four you know what i'm saying like condensed magic powerful magic multiple locations something there might be something to what dolrin's going on about so I'm just so, saying, I'm I'm not trying to jump to any conclusion. Don't worry about Dalhack. But from those lore stories, right? If we're on top of not an elf gate, but elf gates, I'm telling you, for the number that you got me, Dahlgren, the halfling, and even as happy as his smile is, they have no idea how powerful and how valuable that location would actually be you possibly and should fear it and i'm going to leave you guys with that thought until next time say oh. good night muros hey good night that was sweet tight bedding down on top of the hilltop a defensible position everyone leaves the goblins first watch i mean what could possibly happen you guys did the work all day three dwarfs stretch out looking at the stars each thinking the different possibility about elf gates dahak lore and mushrooms and we'll <laughs> see you next time good night everybody good night everybody Bye. good night Bye. everyone and thank you very much everyone quick break and um we'll play some star wars rob Rob, too much, too fast. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> it's like, come on, buddy. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. What do you want to do? I've got you in the birdcage. I could possibly milk an entire episode with a long cow about what's going on the ship, and then maybe get going with Aiden, who's who's, but. Poor Aiden's, but well, okay. Um, am I gonna see you Sunday? Uh, yeah, now it's a possibility. Um, Frank may not show. Aiden is available. Ashley is quasi available. So like I said, if I don't get serious like Frank or something, and, or maybe I might, um, if I could possibly dig up Rob. Can you give me two hours on Sunday afternoon, Rob? Or are you too much busy? Okay, anyway, a lot of this is up in the air, but if I can get Rob, as opposed to see, even Frank, I need for I need Frank for either one. So um, I might just call it, but like I said, don't surprise me by tomorrow night. I'm texting you guys, going, okay, you know, at least let's do two hours. We'll make it a short day and get some footage, and you know, so everybody can have like the rest of their Sunday. Because Sunday night, Rob, 
we're starting Jarrett's World, Joe. The, the Simply Second Edition finished our thing with you, and we're going to show the world how easy someone can take a homebrew, like Eberron, and use Second Edition Pathfinder with Corey and drop it in. And we're going to run that for a couple sessions until we get till October. And in October, beginning or end, we're going to launch Rob's Starfinder game doing Frequency of Screams as a horror. Good night. So, quick break, guys, and we'll see what we can't do in the world of Star Wars. I'll bring those guys into the chat. A bit choppy on my part, but not a bad game, guys. I loved how you actually called me back. That that joke was so bad that I just like I got your message machine and I yelled into it, <laughs> and then you called me back and I got the answer I wanted. So that's got to be live stream history right there. I'm telling you. A what? Saving. Oh, oh, okay. Um, both Rob... Sorry. Go ahead. Where are they shooting? In Toronto? So you got to meet the cast? Because we actually watched the first season of that. They had no lights, they all went home, right? <laughs> they bring in the electricians. Okay, all right, cool. But very cool, you were there. We actually checked out the live action Teen Titans on Netflix and finished, we streamed, we finished Boys and Rob's, Rob's watching. Oh, I love it. The Dolphin? Oh my God. Cheryl and, and the Dolphin. He's rescuing the Dolphin. Okay. They're rescuing the Dolphin, right? And, and... Cheryl and Aaron was back up from college, right? And we're watching through it. He sat through one show and the dolphin goes through the window and gets hit by a truck. And Cheryl, we've been making jokes and it's a very adult show to watch in, even in front of your 19 year old kid. Cheryl runs up and goes, oh my God, I hate this show. But like, it's a joke. And Aaron jumps up and goes, oh my God, I love this show. <laughs> and I just, the two of them, I was literally in tears for 10 minutes at their outbursts. Okay, sorry, I gotta get to the chair for a minute. I'll be back. 